Thanks a lot, everybody. Um, and as I said before, I apologize that I don't speak French, um, so I hope uh, my English is, is okay. Um, thanks a lot for having me um, today. Um, I developed like, PHP software for well close to 25 years. It's a bit long and scary. Um, it was PHP 3 at the time. And um, so for that, it's really an honor to be in invited here at this, at this event. So um, I'm an open source person for a long time. Since the 90s, I'm contributing to different open source projects. For example, the KDE project, where I did lot, all kinds of things. Um, community websites developed in PHP, for example, long time ago. Um, and also was a, a board member um, for some time. I also was invited by the W3C to work on some internet standards. For example, the ActivityPub standard, which is used by Mastodon now. Um, I'm doing a little bit of lobbying uh, at the European level for open source and open standards as part of the Open Forum Europe. Um, I was invited by the United Nations to help them with their open source strategy, but I think I'm mostly invited here as the founder of, uh, of Nextcloud. So I want to tell you a little bit about Nextcloud, what we're doing. I mean, I don't want to do a uh, marketing event here, but I think it's important for the context that it's interesting for you to know what Nextcloud is. Um, may I ask who in the room knows Nextcloud? Okay, quite some people. A third, I would say. That's great. Um, then I will talk a little bit um, what how we're working with the open source community. And, and then at the end, of course, the main part why, Next, uh, why PHP is a great, um, um, a great language for Nextcloud and the reason why we are successful. So um, what is Nextcloud? Um, so um, I see this a little bit as a history chart. You have the file server um, with Novell and Microsoft like in the 80s and 90s. But then a little bit later, there was file sync and share. Um, this is like more than a file server. It's something like Dropbox or OneDrive or Google Drive because there you have mobile apps and you can sync and you have a web interface and versioning and so on. Um, but at the end, what we all do and use today is a collaboration software. So a software to work together over the internet. And that's, of course, Microsoft 365 or Google Workspace or Nextcloud Hub. So because of that, Nextcloud is like divided in different pieces. I mean, we have lots and lots of apps and extensions, but these are the four main pieces. So we have files for file sync and share. There's talk for chat and video conferencing. Group fair, mail, calendar, and contacts, and office for office documents. The difference here is that um, unlike um, Zoom and Slack and Google and Microsoft and Dropbox and all the others, we are not SaaS. We provide a software, completely open source software developed in PHP that you can take, put it on any machine you want. You can put it on a Raspberry Pi at home or a bigger server or a big cluster. And then you have your own local Microsoft 365 and your own local completely open source Google Workspace. So this is what we do. It's like self-hosted, but still has all the features. And it's 100% open source and 100% developed by our community. So I will show you a little bit more about that. So this is the file part. This is just very similar, as you know, from Google Drive and other solutions. You can upload and download your files. You can tag them. You can search them. There's a trash bin, send out share links, and so on. Um, there's some versioning system, so you can always go back to old versions of files. You can compare versions with each other. It's just a very nice and powerful file management. And again, you can just put it on any machine you want, and then you have a very private solution. Because this is um, self-hosted and private, um, it's used by a lot of organizations who care about security. For example, this is used by the French government, used by the German government, used by the European Commission, 
Swedish government, by, the, by Amnesty International, by the Red Cross, and lots of other organizations who care about having their data local. They want to have all the modern tools, but keeping the data local. There are, of course, also mobile apps for iOS and Android, where you can upload and sync and share everything from your, desk, uh, from your, from your phone or from your tablet. Um, we have a push notification system. This is actually a bit tricky, because to send push notifications through Apple and Google to phones, you need to have developer certificates. So we develop a special push proxy in the middle, where you can just take a zip file with the PHP code, unzip it in a web server, and it already works. You can send push notifications. It was quite interesting to develop that, and also because we don't want to expose any user data, but we have immediately push notifications to all devices. And there's a desktop client for Mac, Windows, and Linux, which synchronizes your files local to Nextcloud in both directions, show you notifications and other things. A very interesting feature that we have is federation, which means if you have different Nextcloud servers, if you have a Nextcloud at home, Nextcloud at your university, Nextcloud at your government, Nextcloud in your soccer club, um, different users can have shared folders even across servers. So you can really have a shared folder even if you have different Nextcloud servers which are not in the same place. The federation feature, we de developed this many years ago. And this is something that makes like collaboration decentralized. It's uh, our mission. Um, then the second part is Nextcloud Talk. This uh, can do chat and video conferencing. The chat is this groupware interface. It's very similar to Slack or Teams. You can have all the people there, have reactions, emojis, post in documents, do polls, invite external people, all the things you want to do. And of course, there's a video calling system. You just like press a button, and there's a video call starting similar as Zoom or Teams or anything else. Right? And this really works out of the box. You just take the zip file from our website, unpack it on your Linux machine, um, and of course, PHP needs to be configured, but then you have your own local video conferencing and chat solution. Um, then we have a very powerful calendar. We have shared calendars and yeah, I do all sending invites and free busy support. Um, what's very new, there's even an exchange connector. So if you need to connect it to your exchange server, maybe in your company, you have an exchange server that can speak to it. Then there is a mail client. So we don't do a mail server, but we have a web interface, very nice, powerful mail client, similar to Outlook Online or Gmail or others with all the usual features. We can encrypt mails with SMIME, GPG, with delayed sending, um, convenient features like unsubscribe from newsletters with one click and many other things. And of course, there's the Office solution. This is built on, on top of LibreOffice. So this is not developed in PHP, unfortunately. So this is uh, based uh, using LibreOffice on the server. But you can then do collaborative editing of Office documents in the browser with different people, with different cursors um, at the same time. And you can even have a video call while different people work on the same document. And this works for text documents, as you can see here, but also spreadsheets, so for Excel documents. Um, presentations, and then also drawings and, and, and diagrams. So this is uh, this is quite uh, quite powerful. So again, a complete alternative to American or Chinese cloud services, open source, developed by a community on your own machine. Um, so something I want to show you now is um, the latest things that we are doing. And we're investing a lot in AI features at the moment, which I think is quite quite interesting because, again, the competition, the proprietary cloud solutions do the same. And we want to have a complete free open source local alternative. So we really do a lot there. So um, actually, like three weeks ago, we launched like the latest version. It's called Nextcloud Assistant. It's part of Nextcloud. It's using a large language model, which works completely on your server. It even works on your Raspberry Pi if you want. Um, it's 100% open source, um, and you can really deploy it and run it yourself. This is quite unique, because if you really work with confidential data, you don't want anything like leaving your machine. And again, this is why a lot of governments and organizations who care about security like Nextcloud, because it, everything stays on your machine. Um, of course, we can also integrate other services. For example, this is the configuration 
On top, you can see if you want to do translations, the administrator can decide, hey, I want to use ChatGPT for translations, or I want to use a completely open source model here from the University of Helsinki, which runs locally. So you can choose what you want. The same if you want to do speech to text, you can use like the whisper service from OpenAI or something that runs completely local. Text processing the same, so you really have the choice. So we can do a lot of AI features completely local open source on your machine, like face recognition, um, object recognition. We have a priority inbox, so you can see which mails are very important, um, translations, text generations, and so on. I'll show you a few now. So if you click on the assistant button, you get a dialog like that, where first of all, you can chat with your assistant, and you can also say, I want to have an image generated, or I want to refine the text, and so on. And again, I think we are the only ones who can do this locally. Um, of course, you can use it to generate all kinds of content. For example, here in mail, if you want to write a mail, and you want to write an invitation for a birthday party, and I don't know how, you can just say, hey, send me an invitation, write me an invitation email, click, and then the mail is uh, generated for you. Um, and again, not like OpenAI or Google or Microsoft, where the data is transmitted somewhere else. This is all local. Um, then whenever you work with some text in Nextcloud, you can always mark the text. And then on the side, there is a button where you can say, generate a headline, summarize it, reformulate the text, translate the text, or anything else. So it's very useful if you're, if you're a writer to, to work with text. And again, you know all the features from BART and JetGPT but this is open source and on your machine. Um, let's say you're in an in office, and you want to write like a document, this next slide office, there's a button on top, you just press here. You can then use the different services. Let's say I want to have a, a contract generated and it generates a contract and directly um, in the office document. And you can of course refine it then if you want. Let's say you're in a chat conversation. Let's say you're in a conversation about creating an event or some marketing discussion, I don't know, and you want to visualize something. Then you can say, hey, I want to have an image here. And you can give in a prompt. And then there's an image generated and put directly into the chat, and you can discuss about the image. So this is, um, again, very useful. And again, sorry for saying it again, but with other solutions, all this stuff would be sent like, to the US, um, but not here. Uh, if you want to dictate something, maybe you want to dictate your mails or your documents or your chat messages, there's a dictation system using the Whisper um, system, uh, which is open source and local. Um, if you do a video call, you can get a trans, uh, like a recording of a video call, and you can also get a complete transcript of the video call and even a summary of it, again, using the local uh, um, uh, Whisper system. Um, then the, this assistant is also integrated into the chat. So let's say you're in a group chat and you're discussing with your colleagues, hey, I want to organize an event like this here. So what is important to think about? You can say, hey, assistant, uh, what are the most five important things for an event? And then the assistant just responds like a real assistant, like a person about the things that should be taken into account. So this is very helpful for your normal work. And again, open source. Um, also, if you get a lot of emails, um, then um, you have this feature where you can get a summary of an email thread on top, where all the emails, the emails are summarized, and you can very easily see um, what is discussed without reading like a few hundred emails there. Then we also have a few more technical features. For example, um, this is, uh, again, another large language model um, that we use um, internally, also developed in PHP, of course, which is analyzing the login behavior. So it analyzes who logs in into the system, when, from where. So let's say someone logs in in the middle of the night from a different continent, then you think, hmm, maybe something is wrong. And then we can trigger two-factor authentication or send out a warning or lock the account or something. And then the last thing is document classification. So we can also look inside documents and think, OK, this document contains bank information or social security numbers or something else confidential. And then we can tag the documents and say, OK, this document cannot be shared or this document is not allowed to use this IP space or something like that. 
So um, these are quite advanced AI features um, where we might think, okay, this is not really possible with uh, PHP, but uh, most of them are actually, are actually possible. I have to say that some of the features actually, unfortunately, <laughs> to say here, require Python, where we have some kind of wrapper to put it into Nextcloud. But uh, most of those features I, I showed you, like the face de uh, detection, login behavior, and uh, um, analyzation, and so on, are really developed uh, as, as PHP. And this is possible. So Nextcloud is like a small company that is developing it. But uh, most of the development really happens in our community. So it also started as an open source community. So when I founded this like 13 years ago, there was no company. It really started as a complete open source um, community where like really just people came together and say, okay, I want to have this alternative to big tech and let's develop this together. So our community is really key. A lot of companies think that community are the users or fans, or I don't know, but for us, the community are really the people who are doing it really part of it so this is really important so we have in the core repository alone on github we have over 2000 volunteers at the moment who are submitting actually pull requests like code so it's a quite a big community and this is not counting all the extensions the apps or translators or or people do packaging and lots of other things so it's quite uh, quite big and I, I think we are probably one of the biggest uh, php communities out there it's very international, very uh, worldwide, and of course, they do everything, testing, feature requests, translation, packaging, promotion, all kinds of things. So everything is, is open and possible. Um, it's Everything we do is on GitHub, in the open, not only the code, the discussions around bugs, the feature planning, the tests, everything that um, um, that is needed. Um, so everybody is invited to just write a bug report or feature request. Obviously, that's very easy um, with GitHub. Um, there's translations um, are very important. I think this is a bit outdated. Here we have 96 languages. I think there are more in the meantime. Um, we even have translations in Klingon. Uh, it's very important. <laughs> so um, yeah, and we have really nice great uh, translation community for all kinds of languages. Um, then, of course, promotion. Um, you can just go to this repository. You can download some material. Um, and we have lots of people all over the world who just do promotion. I was a few months ago, I was at an event in, in Los Angeles to give a talk there. And then I just walked into the event. And there was suddenly a Nextcloud booth. And I didn't even know it. It was just someone from the community that said, oh, Nextcloud is cool, let's promote it here. So this is uh, really the power of community that we have here. Then, of course, code contribution, obviously. And I really want to stress that the process for uh, just some contributor, someone like you maybe, and like people who are paid to do it, uh, is exactly the same. So maybe for this crowd, this is not surprising. I mean, I think. PHP is developed in the same way, but for a lot of people who come from a company background, for them, it's mind blowing that just everybody on the internet has the same power than an employee. It's just the same process. So just do a pull request, um, you submit the pull request, then of course the tests need to be, uh, need to work, right? There is automated test, obviously. Um, then there are two other reviews needed the two other people need to give us thumbs up. And they don't, again, don't need to be employees or paid by it. Just other community people can say, hey, this is cool. And then it's automatically merged and then it's guaranteed in the next release. So um, very open and transparent process. And this is why a lot of community people are happy for it. Um, and of course, we also care about lots of other things like um, diversity. So we have our diversity program, Nextcloud Include, where we do mentorships and and travel support for people from underrepresented groups. So you really want to bring people together from all over the world. It doesn't matter what kind of background. And this is a power of community. So this is uh, this is what Nextcloud is doing. Um, of course, um, you wonder now, OK, why why I'm here. And I want to bridge the gap to, um, to you here uh, from the PHP community. 
to talk a little bit why PHP is, uh, is the choice for Nextcloud. So when I started all of that 13 years ago, I mean, version 1.0 was developed 100% by me, but nowadays there's no code left for me, which is very good. So we have better people now. <laughs> but um, I was, it's basically my fault. I decided that 13 years ago that um, we should build this on top of PHP. And I think this is a, was a great choice. And I think it's still a very good choice for lots of reasons. So the first reason is that PHP code is very easy to deploy. So the idea of Nextcloud is that everybody should be able to run it just super easy wherever they want. And because of that, um, I wanted to make like the deployment of Nextcloud as easy as possible. So it's still today, you can take a zip file from the website, you go, go into your web root, into your Apache Nginx root, you unpack the zip file, and then it works. That's all you have to do. And this was the design goal, and this is possible with PHP, and I don't think it works with lots of other, other languages like that. Obviously, this will be the very basic setup. It will use SQLite and doesn't have Redis and doesn't have all kinds of other things, but it works. And of course, if you want to scale to more users and Nextcloud can scale to millions of users, then you obviously need to have a cluster or Kubernetes or something like that, but you don't really have to. So PHP, very easy to deploy. This is something I really, really always liked. The second is I really like that PHP is, is independent from any big companies. So the PHP Foundation, the PHP community is like independent, who just works like yeah independently from big tech to just do the best for the PHP ecosystem. So this is for me very important because this means it's very reliable. And as you know, there are other technologies that come from, I don't know, Google or Apple or other sites. I no longer, I don't know, I'm not really sure what the future of those are, right? Because Google, for example, they're killing things all the time. So I don't know. Um, so PHP being independent is really, really important. I think it's a good foundation. Um, then another thing, which is a lot, not a lot of people talk about it, but for me it's very important, is I actually think that PHP scales very, very well. And this is, if you post this on Reddit or Hacker News, I don't know, then you, a lot of people disagree. Um, because they think, ah, but it's not compiled, and it's like how Go and Rust is faster and so on. Yeah, but there might be faster on a single thread, but PHP actually scales better. The reason is because every PHP request is isolated from each other, as you know. There's no shared memory or anything, which means you can just adding more application servers and they don't really talk to each other. And if they don't talk to each other, it means they scale linearly. So this is something a lot of people don't really realize. And I think it's a big strength. If you use Go, for example, and you have like fancy threads and shared memory and things, yeah, good luck. Um, like clustering that over lots of servers, right? There's no shared memory between servers. So I really am a big fan of the way of PHP works. It's very simple and it's very easy to scale. Then I think it's relatively easy to learn, which is also for us important because of the community. I mean, if you're a volunteer, you just look into it, you want to quickly fix a bug, implement a feature. You don't want to like study it for half a year, right? You want to learn it quickly. And I think PHP is quite easy to understand, which is a good thing. Um, I really, I'm really, really happy, and thanks to the core developers and the PHP Foundation, that PHP is a language that evolves over time. For me, this is so important, because, well, as I said at the beginning, I started with PHP 3. Um, well, it was not that good, <laughs> it was okay, but uh, yeah, I had uh, some problems. But that's okay because PHP evo evolved, right? It's like getting better in every release. And this is a really good thing. There are other languages that are stuck in the past. But PHP is really getting better all the time. And this is really, really nice. Of course, for us, it's a challenge because we always need to, yeah, deprecations and things we need to handle. But I really like it because it, it's future proof. Then I think it's also very lightweight. This means if you want to have a PHP development environment, yeah, you just install PHP and yeah, maybe there are some modules you need to configure, but it very quickly works. 
but having like a full environment in other languages like Node or Python can be a real nightmare to be honest. A PHP is very easy to just have a basic setup that works and also have like a basic application, a basic website, something is just a few lines of code. Um, I talked with some colleagues as preparation for this talk. Um, some people will come from the Java world, for example. Yeah, I mean, developing a Java web application is like a nightmare, right? I don't know, you need like a thousand lines of boilerplate code first before something happens. PHP is very easy, very lightweight. This is something that's very nice. Then, of course, uh, the very, very, very big uh, developer community. PHP might be a little bit like uncool sometimes. I totally disagree. I think it's a great tool. And a lot of people are really like it and know it and are part of it. That's very important. I, I would not pick some fancy new language that no one knows for a big project. If you want to build a big project, you want to use something that is well known. PHP, of course, is it. Then all these integrations, modules, frameworks that are available. And this is a really big strength. You can choose between different ones. Um, and there's just a lot of different yeah, alternatives and things and plugins, and it's actually quite powerful and well integrated. Then it's also battle tested, which means it just works for many, many, many years. Right? It's not something the cool that you find, you install, and then, oh, hmm, there's a major bug, so I don't know what to do now, hitting a, hitting a wall. There are no major bugs in PHP. There are small bugs, sure, maybe, I don't know, but it just works. Right? And if you want to commit to a language and to a platform, it is important that it just works. Of course, I also want to <laughs> say a few things that could be improved, um, as always, nothing is perfect. There are less than good things. The good things is more than the bad things, but still want to mention some things. Um, the whole architecture has some limitations. Um, for example, um, web sockets are not really possible to implement because of the whole system PHP works, as you know, uh, request-based. So having open connections is something that is not really possible. So um, this was a bit of a challenge for us. Because the next lot talk with the video conferencing and the chatting, you actually need like open connections for real time communication, right? About video calls and stuff like that. So, um, what we do is we use a long polling for a basic setup. Again, if you just unzip uh, the source code into your web server, then it automatically uses long polling, which, as you know, it has a request, a request. Uh, runs like until the execution time is reached, like 30 seconds, and then it's killed, and then we just open a new one and do the same. And this works okay -ish. Like, But we actually have for this stuff, we have a separate daemon developed, um, developed in a different language, which you can, if you want, install in parallel, and this then handles the WebSocket connections to the clients. So being able to do this directly in PHP would have been nice, but of course, it's not the architecture. Um, then it's still relatively easy to write insecure code. Um, it's really getting better. The whole typing system, the, the strict typing and all the other improvements that came lately are really helping a lot. And of course, proper frameworks help a lot. But still, as you know, with one line, you can develop a very nice uh, gigantic remote execution security hole. So, um, yeah. It's, with great power comes great responsibility, I guess. Um, then, of course, this is the famous one. I think you all heard it for 20 years. There are some inconsistencies, um, like in the, in the array handling, for example, how indexes are done. But that's something, I guess, we can never clean up. It would just break everything, I guess. But yeah, there are some inconsistencies. Um, and then there are some things in the modern world that are not that nicely supported in PHP. For example, most of the things, um, the modern machine learning things I mentioned earlier that we're doing, obviously there's like something like the Python community, there are just a lot more frameworks there. So it, but it's not really, there's no reason for it. There's just a bit more momentum. So it would be nice if the PHP community would also provide 
some more nicer machine learning features and, and frameworks there. And there's a one colleague of mine who requested really support for more functional programming. Um, yeah, some people like it. I personally don't like it, but they are fans of it. But it would be nice if you have something like that also a little bit more supported. So to summarize it, um, Nextcloud is successful because we use PHP. Because as, we, as I said all at the beginning, there are lots and lots of reasons why I personally think that PHP is the right choice um, for us. And um, this will also not change. We're not doing any rewrite in, I don't know. I'm really happy to stick with PHP and um, develop this further with all of you with the PHP community. So we are able to provide like a full alternative to the Microsoft 365 and Google Workspace because of PHP. Um, we can still do the innovative AI features. Um, because of PHP, it's super easy to run it and host it wherever you want. And of course, 100% open source and, and free software, uh, same as PHP uh, itself. So now I'm at the end of my talk, and I hope we still have some time for some questions. Thanks a lot. We have, we have 10 minutes for questions, so don't hesitate if you have a question. Thank you for the talk. Um, what's the business model for uh, Nextcloud? Yeah, uh, I don't see you, by the way. <laughs> There's too much light. Uh, here, OK. Um, so um, our business model is very similar to the one from Red Hat or SUSE or MariaDB or some other um, open source companies. So the software is completely open source, and you can just take it and do whatever you want. But if you're a big organization, then you probably want to have like support and like workshops and like influence on the roadmap and certifications and trainings and all kinds of things. And that's what we offer. So basically, if you look at Red Hat, you can use Fedora if you want. It's totally fine. But if you're a big company, you might use then Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which comes with like, I don't know, 10 years of support and certifications and stuff like that. And that's the same for us. You can just use it as you want as community, but if you're a big government, you probably want to work together with us and then we have these support contracts. That's what we sell. Some more questions. Hello. Uh, during the history of uh, Nextcloud, here, hello. Ah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> during the history of uh, Nextcloud, has there been uh, some times where it has been discussed to uh, shift from PHP to another language? Mm, I don't think so. Um, I don't think so. Um, if you have a little bit of time, of course, I can dive a little bit more into the past, something that I skipped because there was actually a project before Nextcloud uh, called OwnCloud, that's something I also founded. Um, and Nextcloud is the successor. And actually the OwnCloud project, which is still alive, but half alive, they actually decided to throw all the PHP code away and rewrite everything in Go. Um, and I think it was, was still is a complete disaster um, because big rewrites are, I don't know, Never a good idea, I think. Um, yeah, now they have like half working code. And um, yeah, so I think rewriting it in other language is most of the time not a good idea. I mean, maybe it's small, a small code base, fine, but a big code base, I think, is proven in the IT history to be always a disaster. So now we, we, there's no plans to, to migrate it to anywhere else. Hello, thank you very much for the talk. Uh, I have the question about the um, approach, how you approach to, let's say, manage the contributions from the community, because you said that most of the work is done by the community, 
but do you have some kind of the open backlog that everyone has can work on or do you mostly vo like place your work on the in the features that people are proposing do you vote somehow for that or how do you approach that <laughs> yeah um so first of all if you go to github and you filter for feature requests then you find i don't know thousands of feature requests for everything you can imagine to cook coffee and i don't know um so of course everybody is free to pick whatever they want and implement whatever they want um so we as next project lead we also have sort of an official roadmap where we def document where we want to go and this is also where the company puts the resources in um, and the community people can look at it and think well it's a good idea i help or i do something completely different um so i mean as a company we have a proper roadmap planning obviously but for volunteers that do what they want. So we cannot really m tell them what to do. 99.9% um, .9 it's good. There's like a very tiny case where someone develops a feature which is just stupid. <laughs> then, I don't, then you have to say no, but it happens once a year. I don't know. So yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, I wanted to say thank you because uh, I'm a Nextcloud user for uh, years uh, that I uh, self-host. Um, in the advantages in using PHP, you mentioned um, the ecosystem and uh, about the framework interoperability. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering uh, what uh, uh, framework components Nextcloud is using. Thank you. Yeah, so... Um at the beginning, when I when I started it, um, I had the design goal, as I said, to just unpack it and it just works. And the goal was also that you can unpack it in a subfolder, because the idea was that if you're in university and if you're home directory somewhere, that you can also up unpack it in a sub sub subfolder of the web root and it should just work. And at the time, there was no framework that made this possible. So most of the frameworks required custom configuration or require that you install it into the root. Um, so this is custom. Um, nowadays, we use uh, a bunch of uh, Symfony components, like for the, the router, for example, um, and Doctrine and, and, and stuff like that. So we use some components, but the overall framework is custom because we didn't really find something that fully supports what we wanted to do. Thank you. Um, what's uh, next for Nextcloud? <laughs> I don't know. If you contribute, then you decide. <laughs> no, I mean the goal is the goal is still the same that we want to build an alternative to these big tech services. I don't want to live in a world where like five companies has all the data on of the planet. So the goal is to decentralize everything, to have your local alternative, to have your open source alternative. And that's still what we're, what we're going to do. Yeah. We have time for one question. Hi, thanks for the talk. And my question is about the AI functionality. You say that the next cloud is self-hosted. So I suppose this is just PHP, it's something very lightweight. But if we want to host the large language model and all the functionality, what the system requirement we need for something uh, working on? So the AI world is changing very, very fast. So at the moment, um, the, large, the open source large language model that are available today, the best ones I think are the Llama 2 from Meta, the Falcon model and the Mistral model, actually here from France. Um, they are run very nicely locally, even on the Raspberry Pi. Of course, if you don't have a GPU, then the performance is not so great. So it's possible that if you ask a question that it might take in the worst case a minute before you get an answer. Um, but if this is okay with you, that's fine. 
Of course, if you have a bit of faster machine, maybe even with a GPU, then it's it's real time. So it yeah it depends a bit on your on your expectations and your the hardware you have. But the goal of Nextcloud is still to really run also on a very tiny machine and also on a very big machine. So by the way, this is something I forgot to mention. It's actually quite mind blowing that the same code runs on a Raspberry Pi than on the biggest instance. The biggest instance has 20 million users on a Kubernetes cluster and it's the same code. It's also very benefit of PHP, I think. Thank you, Frank. Thank you.